Build hacks in Golang are the conventional and common way to, for instance, differentiate between production and debug builds, or even to differentiate the functionality for different operating systems. That's why in this video we are going to quickly take a look at how we can use and leverage these build tags in Go. Okay, so let's just first clarify the question, what are even build tags in Go and how can we leverage it and why should we leverage them? A pretty simple definition would be that these build tags in Go allow the developers to include or exclude files from the build process based on specific conditions. And this can be pretty useful, for instance, for platform specific code or even disabling and enabling features based on your product whether it's a premium version or the free version, for instance, or even simply for controlling the dependencies. Now, in the end, it's pretty simple, like everything is in Golang, and they are just comments in Go that pretty much just instruct the Go toolchain whether to include or exclude a specific file from the build process. Okay, so let's quickly look at a practical example here. So what we're going to do just for testing purposes is we are going to create a simple log package or log module or log directory. So what we're going to do is create a directory called log in this case, and then we're going to create two files. The first file is called debug.go, and then we also have a file called release.go. And now we have two files inside of our log package. Now I think it's quite clear that this is not a real world use case, and obviously you should probably use a third dependency logger for that. But for now we'll leave it as it is and it's pretty likely that you will use these build tags whenever you want to build platform specific code. So for instance you want to have a Linux specific functionality that is not really available on macOS or Windows for instance, then you want to leverage these build tags. And the good thing is that Golang also natively supports this. So for instance, let's just do a quick example here to show you what I mean. So let's just ignore the debug.go Let's just declare the package here called log, right? And then we have like a function called I don't know, debug or something. We will refactor this in a minute. And now let's just imagine that for whatever reason we want to use this syscall.mount function. And as you can see on macOS, only the unmount function exists here. So how can we actually call this mount function, which only probably exists on Linux? What we could simply do is we could just define a build tag called go column build and then we could say Linux and then we would actually see that the mount function is now available, right? And if we just jump into the mount function, we actually see that the file name is syscall underscore Linux. But if we remove this and let's just call the unmount function here, what we'll actually have is the arm64.go file for macOS or for Darwin in this case. I just wanted to demonstrate this, right, because it's, I think, worth noting that if you want to call, for instance, Linux-specific functionality that originally exists in Golang, then you can use these build tags and the Go LSP will automatically recognize this. So this is pretty cool, so let's just get quickly back to the original tutorial here. Okay, so what we're going to do is instead of calling this function debug, what we're going to say is debug log. And this debug log function takes in a message called string, right? And then we just say log.printf, and then we call debug, and here we call percent %s as a verb, and then we say message. Now, obviously, we have to import the log package here, but that's just it for our debug.go file. So let's just quickly copy this, go to our release.go file and paste the contents in. And then we are going to remove the import here and we are going to remove the log.printf. So the use case is here pretty simple. Whenever we are debugging our application or whenever we say that debugging should be enabled through a build tag in Go, then we want to print something to the console wherever we call this debug log function. However, when we release the application, we do not really want to remove all the print statements, right? We just want to have like in this case, an empty function that just does nothing. And with that, in the end, it doesn't really print anything when we have a release build, right? So whenever we build a release version, we want to include this function here into our program. However, whenever we have a debug build or whenever we are debugging our application, 
we want to have this function inside of our application. So how can we now differentiate between a release build and a debug build, for instance? What we could simply do is just create a build tag here. And as I stated earlier, we can just use comments for that, right? And the old way of kind of defining these build tags would be to use plus and then build. And then we kind of name this build tag with, for instance, debug. And if we now save this, we'll actually see that we now have like the newer version on top here. And this should always be used, right? I just wanted to demonstrate how to also leverage the old kind of way of defining these build tags, but we will just go with the new one here. So what we now have is no error at all, which kind of makes sense because we now kind of differentiate between two different builds. And now it's important to know that this file will only be included in our build or this file will be only built whenever the build tag is debug in this case. Now you will probably see an LSP issue here. And this LSP issue basically exists because the build tag was not defined in Go. However, you can quickly solve this in your favorite editor. I'm not going to do that here because it's just a pretty simple tutorial basically. Okay, coming to our release.go, obviously we can do a lot more here. So what we now say is go debug, and then we will say not debug, right? So whenever the kind of build tag is not debug in this case, this kind of function or this file will be built in our application. Now, the cool thing is that we can also use logical expressions. So for instance, for our go build debug here in our debug.go file, we could also say, for instance, whether the build tag was debug or test, right? And this would also work. So that really means that whenever the build tag is debug or test, this file will be included in our build version. Okay, so let's quickly demonstrate this behavior here. Let's just go back to our main function and then we're going to say log.debuglog and then we just say hello world. Now we're going to import our log package here. And now how can we define these tags whenever we run or build our program. So we can, for instance, say go run, but we can also use go build in this case. And I'm just going to use go run here just for the convenience. So I'm going to say go run, and then we're going to define the tag. So dash and then tags. And then we can define one or multiple build tags for our application. So what we could say is, for instance, debug and test, right? Debug, comma, test. And then we say main.go. Now, if we run this, we will get the output hello world which is expected because we've defined the debug and the test build tag into our Go tool chain, and therefore this debug.go file will be included in our build version. Now this also works if we only define debug or test as a build tag in this case, because obviously we've used here the logical expression debug or test. Now what if we just run go run and then we say for instance, instead of debug, we use prod what we will actually see is no output at all because now the build tag is not debug and not test and therefore this file will be included into our build program. Now this by the way also works whenever we just run main.go because obviously we didn't really define any build tags at all. Right, so let me give you quickly three best practices on when and how to use these build tags here in Go. So I think the most obvious best practice is to use the newer build tag syntax. So in this case, this go column build syntax instead of this plus build and then the go tag definition. Also, it is really important to know that we need to kind of clearly document the purpose of each build tag to really maintain the code readability. And the third one, I think it's the most obvious one as well, is to always ensure that all the build tags are tested properly. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly explain to you on when to use these build tags and how you can actually leverage them in your application. Now, if you also want to know what the new tool directive is in Go 1.24, feel free to check out this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and bye bye.